Uh, Alright, so I am here with my one of my old preceptors, Jared Mueller. He was getting his master's degree while I was an undergrad at Ball State University. Um, and Jared, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, um, I did my undergrad at Southeast Missouri State University. Um, graduated from there in December of 2013 and started at Ball State in August of 2014. Um, and then, yeah, I just graduated a couple of years ago. My uh, first semester or first year at Ball State, I was with baseball. And then I had Megan in the following fall with football. And then I moved on to men's tennis and uh, field hockey. Perfect. Um, so the whole point of this assignment is just to figure out everyone's perceptions on evidence-based practice. So why okay. don't you just go ahead and describe to me what evidence-based practice means to you? Um, what it means to me is just basically making sure that what we're doing as clinicians is A, safe, and B, effective, and is just like the most current care for your athletes. Um, so that's just kind of in a nutshell what I think. Okay. Um, so I had to do a person that had 10 plus years experience and 10 or less years experience. So you're the 10 or less, but okay. so just wondering in like your undergrad and your master's program, did you guys touch base on that or was this kind of a new, newer thing? Yeah, I think, um, in my undergrad, it was a newer thing. So, uh, my first year, they never really talked about it at all. And then it wasn't until the end of my junior year that they started like really introducing it and trying to get us to learn more about it and really adding some research to what we're doing and just, you know, kind of showing that a lot of the things that we were learning that while they still had to teach us weren't necessarily proving to be effective or anything like that. So um, in undergrad, it was definitely a different experience because you're kind of like, all right, so we're doing all these tests and stuff like that, and now you're telling me that there's no research to back it up. Yeah. Um, in grad school, not so much on um, evidence-based practice. Like We were really just trying to figure out who we are as athletic trainers and what works and kind of really relying on some of that just clinical experience to help us out as much as we could. Perfect. Um, I have witnessed you read, um, you know, journals and everything in your clinical yeah. practice, but in future, do you plan on utilizing evidence-based practice in your athletic training room? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's important to always, you know, continue to find the newest research on what you're doing, especially um, whenever you, I think when most people utilize evidence-based practices once they kind of hit a wall in their rehabs or anything like that, they yeah. just start looking for more and more answers. And I think I'll always do that for sure. And I will always encourage other people to do it as well. Good. Um, okay, so I know you kind of hit on it before, but just can you name some advantages or even disadvantages that you think of when you think of evidence-based practice? Uh, advantages are obviously all the advantages are for the athlete and um, – you know, just getting them back as quickly as possible with the newest and, and safest research that's out there. But um, some disadvantages, I think we're trying to use, like, um, like the PICO tables and some of, like, the patient-based outcomes or patient-reported outcomes, and I just don't think there's a good way to do it in an athletic training setting now. I don't think we have, like, the staff to really pull that off. Yeah. Because you have these athletes fill out all these forms about, you know, how they're feeling and stuff like that. And then you're expected to try to go back through and correlate, coordinate all that data and stuff like that. When really, that's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Whenever we finish a treatment or something, we'll always ask, you know, how are you feeling now? Did you feel any different? Like, yeah, you know, I might feel looser. And sure, that might be like a placebo effect, but mm -hmm. I think it's, I think we're already doing it. We're just not really putting it into paper because we don't have the the manpower, the infrastructure to pull it off. Yeah. yeah, I think that's true, too. We're learning more about the organization of doing evidence-based practice, and I think soon that there will be a more bigger technique that everyone will go to. So. Yeah, it's just not quite there yet. Yeah. I agree. Yes. All right, well, that is the end of this interview, and I just want to thank, thank you for doing yeah. this, and I know we've had a little bit of technical difficulties, but I appreciate it, so... No, no problem. Okay. Did you ever get